Hi there, it's Doug here. Uh, we've done a few videos now, uh, but I haven't really got into what I do for investing and that's what I want to do in the next little while. A big part of it for me is managing risk. Uh, that's the way Ben Graham taught things. Uh, it's the way Warren Buffett does it. Many great investors have used managing risk and they do it in a number of different ways. Most of them do it with margin of safety on the stocks, which I will get into how I do a margin of safety and how I evaluate stocks and determine whether they're good buys. Uh, but for the first little while, I want to do a little bit on uh, risks from the market because uh, overvalued markets can crash and when they crash, a lot of things go down with them. Uh, I'm going to particularly pay attention to the United States because it's such a big economy, it affects other economies, particularly us here in Canada. So uh, anyways, uh, sit back, I hope you enjoy this and uh, we'll talk to you in a bit. One. Hi, please remember Stock Story is for education and entertainment and is not for financial advice. Please do your own due diligence before investing. If you get ideas here, that's great, but please uh, make sure that you know what, what you're doing. You're not just doing it based on what you hear here. Anyways, uh, moving forward. Um, so this is all about trying to figure out whether the stock market's overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. And uh, just how do you do that? There is actually many ways. There's, uh, I'm going to show you one about market cap to GDP. I'm also going to show you about uh, price of stocks compared to what they earn and whether it's good value there. There are other ways, and I will give a link in the description for another site that uh, has sort of a heat map of the world and, and and you can sort of tell based on a lot of different types of valuations uh, uh, just w what countries look like they're overvalued or undervalued um, but for now I, I've got uh, a number of graphs and 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 illustrations from uh, guru focus which I'll leave a, a link for in the description below as well so so the top one here is uh, it's basically the blue line is the total stock market. That's every company and the value of their stock times their number of shares. Uh, so that's basically the stock market going up and down. The green line, on the other hand, is the gross domestic product, which is basically a measurement of, of, of the growth of the economy. And so, as you can see, the green line is... Uh, a much sober drive than the the blue line you can see that the green line goes up you there, there's a little uh just get the pointer out here there's a little blip here and that's considered that was called the great recession uh which is kind of uh it was a big deal and 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 it did impact people a lot but you can see that uh the blue line the stock market itself crashed big time it it it, it over like overshot and you'll see that particularly since uh, the 90s when the dot-com bubble came up people get really exuberant buy stocks even when they're not really selling at good prices and so they end up with this overvaluation that's up here uh, and if you're the last one in it's almost like a uh, a pyramid scheme and and if you're holding the bag because you bought up here and it crashes you're in trouble and and my view is at this point you're looking at an overvalued market, which uh, you need to be a little more defensive. And, and in, in my way, that means uh, rebalancing your portfolio. Uh, when, when you're down in these low valleys where, where the blue line or the stock market itself is seems to be undervalued to the economy, uh, as it is in those cases, then I would want to hold a lot of equities and very little cash and fixed income. When I get up, and get up to these higher, these like towards these peaks where we're over the green line, and it's obvious the stock market is uh, ascending at a much greater rate than the GDP to the point that now we're starting to look at high price earnings, high price to book values, and stuff like that. Then I want to take some of the gains I made from my stocks and put it into cash uh, so that. Uh, when there is a correction and it gets back down here, I have cash to buy good-valued uh, equities. 
uh, and also to protect some of my capital that I've earned from 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 the growth of the stock market. So that that's basically what it is. And this is an example. You see, basically the stock market. People buying and selling stocks is like a a drunken driver swerving all over the road. And the economy actually moves. It's got you know it changes, but not as dramatically as the stock market. And you can see it also in here uh, with. Uh, it's, it's worked out as a percentage. So it's the total market cap to GDP as a percentage. And you can see, so you can see basically this is the dot-com bubble. This is the subprime housing crash and, and that sort of thing. Um, moving forward on there, there's also other ways, like I said, and I'm only going to show you the price to earnings one. This is a one called Schiller P where they actually smooth it out over 10 years. So it's, it's not, as dramatic, like like individual years that are out of whack, don't throw it off quite as much as they would if it was just straight PE. But price to earnings basically says how much are you paying for the earnings of the company that you're buying. And if you're if you're paying like uh, ten dollars to get a dollar a year in earnings, that's actually a pretty uh, that's a very good value. If you're paying uh, if you're price that you're paying is like $30 for, for a dollar, then you want to make sure that that company is going to grow at about 30% to be able to justify paying such a high price. And that that's where you're getting out of value investing and getting a little more into speculation. Anyways, you can see here, once again, um, the mean is this dark line here, which is around 16.7. Right now we're at 28.1. So I have, uh, I have been selling some equities. I have a I've been moving between 40 and 40 and 50 percent cash and fixed income, a little less fixed income these days. <clears throat> but you can see there's there's uh, a few peaks here. This one is the start of the Great Depression, and that's the crash in 1929. This one is the dot com bubble and the crash, and then after when it came back up, uh, it. It still, it never really did get down to the mean, but it, it went back up to about the red line. We had the issue with subprime mortgages in the states, which created a greater crash, but did finally get it down to uh, a more historical valuation for the stock market. And so since then, since about the middle of 2009, we've been on a fairly good run up here. So, uh, and up to a point where I think that we're maybe a little little too overvalued and there's a little bit of risk i want to preserve my capital and i want to have money ready for the next time there's there's a significant correction and this is this is uh, uh also from guru focus and i will have links for guru focus so so most of these graphs that are in here are from in fact all of them are from guru focus and um uh, this one just shows uh you know the expectations of growth in the markets of different countries in the in the world, um, and you can see the American stock market is considered overvalued in this this uh, example, and and is showing very little return. Canada is a little bit better, but you can see there's other options. As a result, I, I sometimes will buy ETFs for some countries that are more undervalued. I can't, I don't really have access to their individual stocks and probably don't know enough about them. So uh, I, I often would buy a, an index ETF uh, for, and I have recently for Russia and Italy, which are are, are both uh, expected to do, or, or at least they're undervalued. So they're expected to have better returns. So I said that I, I, I rebalance. So so here's a little bit of a list. So when the market cap is 80% of the gross domestic product, I'm likely to have almost everything, you know, anywhere from uh, uh, 85 to maybe even 100% into equities when, when the markets are low like that. And I feel that we have good values because this is where I think I can make a lot of money. As the as the market grows and as my stocks become less and less of a value, I start to look at the ones that are getting either fairly valued or overvalued, and I start taking skimming a little off the top. I don't sell the whole position, but I start skimming up the top to make sure that I have um, 
a certain balance or a certain amount of cash based on where I think the market's at. And you can see as I go down here, it basically just keeps moving. And as it starts to go over 100%, I still have... Um, you know, like like at a hundred percent, I still still would be seventy five, um, sixty five, seventy five percent in equities, and then the other in cash or fixed income. But as you start getting up to where we are now, one twenty, one thirty, I have actually been I've been hovering between forty and fifty percent uh, for fixed income and cash. And if it was to go all the way up over one forty, I might actually consider shorting this market. Uh, although I'm not big on options, so I, I'm not sure if I would or wouldn't, but I certainly would look at that. Uh, but for now, uh, I've just got a fairly significant, a pretty high uh, cash allocation. Uh, and the portfolio is still doing okay because the market's going up and I still have uh, anywhere from 50 to 60% in equity. So I'm still going up, not as much as the whole averages, but I, I'm doing risk management, and to me, that's a really critical thing. So uh, it's a pretty. This is a pretty simple uh, way of doing things. Uh, some people like to balance all their stocks out so that they have the similar percentages for every holding. I'm not as much that. In fact, some stocks I've got higher conviction on. I'll, I'll hold a higher percentage. You know, five, ten percent. Whereas others, I'll be one percent or lower. Uh, if I think they're, if I think they're, they have good fundamentals, but I don't know them as well, or I don't have as much trust in them as I do in maybe a, a blue chip. Uh, so, but anyways, um, it's a simple way of doing it, but it's a way to preserve cash. And it's a way to make sure uh, that you have some cash when you have really good values. And uh, that's pretty much the whole thing. After this, I'm going to start going into uh, how to, how to manage risk when you're actually investing in equities. And, and the big thing about that is margin of safety. F figuring out the value of the company, the underlying company that the stock's for, and then determining that the the actual stock price is selling at a discount. So anyways, I look forward to talking to you uh, later. I will, like I said, have um, in the description, I'll have uh, links to Guru Focus and to, I think it's called Starlight, um, anyways, that have uh, some uh, information on, on market valuations. And uh, please uh, comment, ask questions, uh, feel free to like it, uh, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Anyways, great talking to you, and we'll see you again soon.